So the Brooklyn Nets have been on an absolute tear recently. And I know it's very easy to strictly acclimate all the success to KD and Kyrie. But I must admit that other role players and Coach Vaughan have been absolutely outstanding and have proven that a change of ways can sometimes show a different side to every player. Now, I must say this year, if I'm a team in the Eastern Conference, I don't want to see the Nets at any point in the playoffs. And I'm telling you right now, their results on the floor are definitely showing how good of a team they can be and finally unlocking their true potential. Like in the last 15 games, they're 14 and one. They've just come off a 12 game win streak, which was ended against the Chicago Bulls. And as a whole, this Nets team are looking scary. Since Steve Nash has been fired, they've been 25 and seven. And I'm telling you right now, ain't nobody gonna slow down this Nets team apart from themselves. So other teams better pray that somehow, some way their production slows down, but I don't see that happening. But why am I here today? What a great question. So I'm going to take a look into each player's stats and I'm going to be explaining to you guys how they've been influential to this team and how important they've been in their own way for the Brooklyn Nets overall success in the regular season so far. But before I get into that, please like, subscribe. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. So where better to start than a man himself, KD? And I know, statistically, he does this shit every single season. KD is phenomenal, but he seems to have taken it to another gear this season when it comes to the efficiency he's doing it at. And I didn't feel like that's possible because KD is one of the most efficient scorers we've ever seen, one of the best of all time. But he's taken his game to another level. So, so far this year, he's averaging 29.7 points, 6.7 rebounds, 5.3 assists and 1.5 blocks. On here this year, 52% from the field, 37% from 3, okay, that's usual for KD. But 51.7% on pull-up jump shots and 57.2% from the mid-range. That is absolutely insane. It's unheard of. This guy is 7 feet tall. I honestly can't believe it, but the mind-blowing stat isn't even here yet. KD is shooting the highest true shooting percentage of all time out of any NBA player that's ever averaged over 27 points per game. I don't feel like you guys understand the greatness you're witnessing. KD is one of the most overhated players of all time for no reason, but he's a true artist on the court. Like that is so difficult to do right there, especially for someone who takes majority of his bucket, well, majority of his full goals are jump shots as well. He's one of the most skilled players we've ever seen, if not the most skilled player. And he's just helped this Brooklyn Nets team be so dominant and is elevating them to new heights, which I'd never seen them even get to before. Hopefully this is their year, but we'll see in it. But I feel like I spent enough time on KD. He speaks for himself. Let's go on to the next player, which is Mr. Kyrie Irving. Now, I'm so happy he's performing like this, but similar again. Kyrie always performs like this, but obviously his off the court beliefs, which I'm not going to get into, seems to affect the media perception he gets with his on court performances. I heard Woj at one point say KD, I mean, Kyrie might not be in the league, which is absolutely insane. But KD, I keep saying KD, Kyrie's been absolutely balling this season, averaging 26 points per game, 4.9 rebounds, 4.7 assists, 1.3 steals, which is stupidly impressive, and 0.8 blocks. Pretty impressive for someone who doesn't play any defense, right? But from the field, he's been shooting 48.8% from the field, 36% from three, and an amazing 42% on pull-up jump shots and 58% on step-back Jays. Kyrie is an absolute bucket. He can score from everywhere. 52% from the mid-range is honestly just ridiculous. And how do you stop this duo? Like, you've got two of the best scorers in the league. They're finally putting it together this season. They're both somewhat fully healthy. Obviously, I hope KD can come back and everyone else stays healthy. But Kyrie's been doing Kyrie things. And I'm so happy that we're starting to, or we're getting to see Kyrie in a basically full season because... On this rate, this might be the most Kyrie we've seen since like 2018-19, which is ridiculous. But hey, Kyrie's also having career highs in blocks per game at 0.8 blocks per game, which ranks number one out of all point guards. Like I said, very impressive for someone who doesn't play any defense, right? But another player who speaks for himself, we know what Kyrie's going to do. We know how dominant he is. But yeah, moving on to the next guy, which is Nick Claxton. Oh yeah, this is my favorite one right here, because if you guys didn't know, I'm not a Brooklyn Nets fan, but I do like the way the Nets play. Brooklyn Nets fans I know always like to me, oh, look, yeah, this is Nick Claxton's year to break out. They've been saying this for the past two years, and it's not really materialized. We'll have spots here and there where he looks great, but this season's been his year, which he's finally burst onto the scene and broken out. If you look at his numbers right here, 11.9 points per game, 8.3 rebounds, 2.6 blocks, 1.5 assists, you might think, okay, cool. He's not an all-star, but in my opinion, his overall... 
contribution on the court and impact he's having, he's definitely an all-star in my opinion because he's leading the league in blocks per game. He's leading the league in field goal percentage. He's having career highs in points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game. I feel like Nick Claxton's impact has been truly amazing. He should definitely be in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year. If not, he will definitely make an all-defensive team. His true shooting numbers are off the charts, even though yes, he mainly does come off pick and rolls, finish around the rim, put backs, but they're still very impressive, don't get me wrong. And Nick Claxton as a whole has just really helped this Brooklyn Nets team with their interior defense and rim protection. And I honestly hope he builds on this in the postseason, becomes more playable. Obviously, it's going to be an issue with his free throw percentages, but hopefully that comes along. But with the things you want Nick Claxton to do, being screen setter, a rim protector, someone who gets rebounds he's definitely doing that to a very high level so i'm so happy with the way nick claxton's been performing and he's definitely been very important for this brooklyn nets team and will continue to be going forward that's my guy nick claxton right there one of my favorite bigs in the league but going on to the next one yuta watanabe now another player who i just like so much because that left-handed jump shot is pure i don't know about you guys but i love seeing this guy shoot the ball especially coming off of ben simmons dime to the wing yuta for three bang but Utah's having a career year in every single category basically he's averaging 7.3 points per game 2.8 rebounds and basically one assist on shooting splits of 55.8 percent from the field and 52.7 percent from three now i feel like he's found his home in brooklyn i hope he stays there long term and they work out an extension towards the end of the season but he's definitely found this role he's not going to chuck up eight three pointers a game but the ones he does take are very very good looks and he usually makes them i like the way he's been used as a lot of a spark shooter but at the same time you're going to see his other abilities on the court and i definitely feel like this is someone who come postseason his minutes per game may actually elevate because you need someone like you to with size who can hustle who tries hard on the defensive side of the ball whilst being a decent defender also and can also space the floor to a high level and has great size so you to someone who i expect to see even more of in the postseason and it's been so good when it comes to spacing the floor and i didn't know he had it in him i'm not gonna lie i didn't think he could be this good of a shooter but hey you has proven people wrong and get this man in the three point contest i want to see it i know you guys want to see it so let's make it happen but yeah like i said he's having career years and points full goal percentages assists per game three point percentages and three point attempts minutes per game so basically every damn category you can think of but hey some players just need the right situation to show what it can really do oh ben simmons like obviously if you guys didn't know, I'm a Sixers fan. I don't hate Ben Simmons. Let's get that right out of the way right now. But I can also acknowledge that even though his production is down and that he can be more aggressive, he's definitely helping the Nets in the areas they need help in. You don't need Ben to average 20, 20 a game when you've already got KD and Kyrie who can do that. You get what I'm trying to say? But so far, Ben has been averaging 7.7 .7 points, 5.6 rebounds and 6, points, um, 6 assists. I was about to say 6.0 assists on 59% from the field. I said 52% from free. Ignore that part. This ain't no Ben Simmons. I forgot to edit the other slide. Damn, that's a little blooper right there. Hey, I'm going to edit that out. Ben Simmons does not shoot 52% from free. Damn, I really forgot to edit that shit. But I definitely feel like there's times where Ben can be more aggressive and it's very frustrating to see because I feel like Ben has this thing in his head where it's like, you know what? Let me get my buckets out of the way. In the first two minutes, Ben might have four points. Then for the rest of the game, he'll attempt two field goal attempts. It's very frustrating. I'm not going to harp on it too much because I know confidence is an issue. He's also shooting a career low 41% from the line and also getting to the line a career low one point something times per game. But hey, it is what it is. He's doing his role for the Nets. He's playing defense. He's being a good screen setter, a good roller. He's facilitating. And to be fair, you don't really need Ben to do much. For my fellow Sixers fans who love to say, oh, we definitely won the James Harden trade. I feel like it's very balanced because we got what we needed in a very talented scorer. The Nets got what they needed in a versatile defender who can defend multiple positions and the opponent's best player and also be a good facilitator so it was a win-win trade and so far i guess ben hasn't been too bad eh really hurts me to say but you know it's all love but getting on to the other key players to mention in the rotation because i can't make a slide on everyone i'll be here for ages but seth curry another guy who i know really well from his time in philly i really love the way he's been this season with the nets his minutes per game has decreased from last year which seen as which has seen a 
reduction in his points per game and other averages but Seth Curry is just a guy who can come off the bench as a catch and shoot guy he'll get to his spots from the mid range and he can definitely create his own shot he's someone that you just want off the bench like a spark plug type of guy and you know what everyone loves a bit of Seth Curry the way he plays his jump shot so smooth and he's just so elegant on the floor so hey Seth Curry has been very very important to this Brooklyn Nets team and I hope to see more of him very soon now Joe Harris um Ooh, this is a difficult one to explain so he is shooting a career not career low but he's shooting the worst he shot from three in about seven seasons at around 37 percent so that just shows how good of a shooter joe harris is because if 37 percent is looked at as bad that's pretty impressive because joe harris is still a knockdown shooter now i do feel like if the brooklyn nets were to move anyone it would be joe harris although at this point i wouldn't really touch the roster but hey but i guess joe harris has been all right like he's still doing his thing off the bench shooting the ball at a decent clip but if Joe Harris can find that stroke again and get back to 42 43 percent which is ridiculous that I'm saying but he has the ability to do so that could just take this next team to a whole nother level you get what I'm trying to say but on to TJ Warren who is my favorite guy on this Nets roster who's not KD and Kyrie obviously I feel like TJ Warren has been the pickup of the season that's going underrated I believe he only came back around three three-ish weeks ago from that ankle injury or something but since he's been back TJ Warren has been an absolute bucket off the bench I feel like you're only seeing the what am, I, what, what am I trying to say the beginning stages of TJ Warren because obviously he hasn't really played proper basketball in years but you can just see the talents there I would definitely sign TJ Warren for to a multi-year deal in the offseason because he's someone who will only grow with more time and minutes and we know what TJ Warren can do we know what bubble TJ was capable of playoff TJ Warren the last time we saw him saw him in the playoffs we know exactly what he did let's hope he can do that this off not this off season this postseason too but on a serious note TJ has been very good for this next team been a bucket off the bench and he's really done all you can ask of him you know bring the energy and I know a lot of Nets fans love him and I see why you know what I mean TJ Warren's been a great addition to this team and cam thomas um he's one for the future like obviously i feel like cam in his few minutes he's getting he takes the initiative the initiative to chuck up some shots sometimes i like cam thomas don't get me wrong so i'm not hating on him he's shooting a career high 38.7 percent from three but you know cam thomas needs more time but there's not really that many minutes for him in the rotation so far so cam someone who you're gonna have to hold on to for a few more years and may start to flourish in a couple years time look at jordan paul he did the same thing so hey you ain't seen the end of cam thomas so don't get too disappointed if he's not getting too many minutes obviously i haven't made notes to everyone but i know edmund sumner's getting minutes here and there and a couple of other guys but hey same as they on sharp but i feel like this next team as a whole everyone's been contrib contributing everyone's been doing their role and playing their role to perfection hence why they're the second seed in the eastern conference and will likely be the top seed in the eastern conference come the end of the season as a team however they've been like i said brilliant like from the field they're shooting 51.2 percent which is as expected because almost everyone in this damn roster is shooting over 50 percent they have two of the most efficient scorers in the league then their bench production is pretty efficient they have some of the best shooters but that's pretty expected so as a team they're shooting 51 percent which ranks number one in the nba blocks per game let's take a guess number one in the nba again at seven that's not a surprise because you have a man like nick claxton who's absolutely swatting everyone that comes in that paint get that shit out of here but yeah nick claxton's definitely been amazing for this team i got a bit too ahead of myself my bad assists per game wise they're around eighth in the nba which is still in the top half could be a bit higher but hey the ball's moving again the buckets who really cares defensive rating wise they're eighth in the nba which is also pretty decent and points per game wise their 14th which is around about mid of the pack again which isn't that deep because they're locking in defensively they're getting the points where they need to and i definitely feel like this next team has a lot more to offer and they've just been a joy to watch so far this season oh thank you guys for watching this video that was all in one take so if i did start here and there don't get on to me i'm trying my best to bring out the content and improve at this stuff because i like doing my stuff in one take i feel like it's more pure and just enjoyable for myself obviously i made this style of video a couple of days ago you guys seem to like it so i'm doing it again but please give me your feedback in the comment section down below do you agree with me disagree with me did i miss anyone out did i miss out any key points i love to read your comments and interact with you guys you know what i'm trying to say but honestly share the video to your friends subscribe like thank you guys so much for your unconditional support and i'm going to come out with more bangers soon come just just wait on me yeah but thank you guys for watching this video and i'm out stay blessed guys peace